The strong must protect the sweet. While everyone likes the taste of sugar and bread, or perhaps I should say everyone is easily addicted to sugar and bread, they are far from an ideal source of energy for the body. While in general lifespan is not greatly affected by diet unless you are morbidly obese, they will definitely aid you by producing advanced glycation end products, or AGEs, which are the main cause of the visible signs of aging. I can't live the button-down life like you. I want it all. The terrifying lows, the dizzying highs, the creamy middles. We all know what wrinkles and gray hair are, but what is cellulite? As it turns out, your body has a matrix of collagen beneath the skin. Everyone has it and there's little you can do about it. The problem comes in when you have thin or damaged skin, then this becomes visible and we call it cellulite. Some people have more than others, and this will make them more susceptible to cellulite. You may have noticed this is much more prominent in older people, this is because the skin tends to be thinner and damaged elastin makes it unable to hold its shape properly. This is also why we get wrinkles. The elastin is supposed to hold the skin firmly in place, but the more damaged it is, the less it does this job. Thankfully, there is one simple cause of damaged elastin. Glycation. Glycation is a process where glucose and fructose in the blood become tangled up with proteins and damage them. This is bad for the skin, and since your endothelial cells in your blood vessels also have elastin, you can imagine it also causes problems there. Often people ask me about honey and other things full of fructose, but one of the many problems of fructose is that it glycates proteins at a rate about 10 times higher than glucose does. What's more, this is not detected in A1C scores, so for people on a high sugar or high fructose diet, this could be causing a great deal of undetected problems. When fructose is metabolized in cells, it creates a byproduct called methylglyoxal. This is poison to your mitochondria and is strongly associated with dementia and cancer. That doesn't mean you have to avoid all fructose, but anything high in fructose is not a health food including most fruit, which is bred to be very high in sugars, and this also includes honey. And it definitely won't be good for your skin or for your mental acumen. Give me... sugar. Cortisol is another source of damage for your skin and hair. Cortisol speeds up the degradation of hyaluron and proteoglycans, while also suppressing the growth of new skin. While cortisol is elevated by fasting, this is an important catabolic mechanism. Fasting is supposed to be catabolic, but once the fast is over, you go into an extended anabolic growth phase. At no other time will your body make more new cells than right after breaking a fast, and this is part of the repair process for skin damage. The problem comes in when your cortisol is chronically elevated which happens from a high-carb diet and insulin resistance. But I love my high-carb, high-fiber, low-nutrition diet. It keeps me malnourished and stick-like. That may be, Carbarella, but you'll not only be skinny, but aging at the speed of light. If you would have had more protein and fat, you could build some muscle in that booty like you always wanted. When insulin is constantly elevated from eating many times a day on a bad diet, your blood sugar is always bouncing up and down. You eat and blood sugar goes up, then your body responds by secreting insulin and it plunges back down. Then cortisol is produced to raise it back up again, which tears down proteins in your body to produce more sugar, and the cycle just continues on and on. Watch your cat, watch your Dave. Heads up cat, look out Dave, come out back at you Dave, look out. Come on, man. I, I told you to look out for it. Would you listen? <laughs> There's a similar issue with adrenaline and gray hair. When you are constantly stressing your body in this manner, norepinephrine is constantly spiked. This causes stem cells to release and become melanocytes, 
Unfortunately, they don't regenerate properly and you run out of stem cells. This is how stress can quickly turn your hair gray. When you fast, you release these stem cells, but you also create new ones so this issue does not occur. Even worse, adrenaline makes you temporarily turn insulin insensitive, which turns into a vicious cycle. Your body simply is not supposed to have chronically elevated adrenaline or cortisol. Again, while fasting, adrenaline goes up, but in the fasted state, adrenaline and cortisol serve a vital purpose in ensuring the body has enough blood sugar. When your blood sugar is already high, then this causes very harmful problems and more and more ping-ponging between cortisol and insulin. Thankfully, you can stop this. Lowering your carb intake and eating foods that cause a lower insulin response will help prevent these issues, and fasting can actually reverse them. When you fast, you not only release stem cells but increase their regenerative capacity. This is important because this allows the stem cells to regenerate and create replacements for themselves when they are called into use. This will also keep your stem cell pools from depleting and stave off issues like gray hair, or even worse, hair loss, both of which will occur if you have enough stem cell pool depletion. These issues can even be reversed to some extent, but if the stem cell pool is too far gone, then it's just too late. In the Trimex trial, growth hormone supplementation was shown to reverse gray hair in some recipients. Fasting will dramatically increase your growth hormone levels, and this could be one mechanism by which some people experience better coloration from fasting and or a low-carb diet. This is also very helpful for your skin quality because growth hormone accelerates the synthesis of collagen. Just be sure you have plenty of glycine and or collagen in the meal you eat when breaking the fast, or just supplement it. Taurine is also vital for skin quality because it is necessary in large amounts to make sure that all proteins are synthesized and properly folded and deposited. And not just your skin either, everything in your body relies on taurine. When you fast, phagocytes will work hard to eliminate glycated proteins. In fact, they always do this to some degree, but for most people today, it is a losing battle. Fasting will reduce the blood sugar and dramatically reduce glycation, while at the same time increasing the activity of phagocytes. This will reverse some of the damage, and for example, your A1C scores will always dramatically drop while fasting, because these glycated cells are simply removed. Fasting also regenerates your immune system itself, and it's your immune system that does all this repair work. One of the biggest problems in aging is that the immune system becomes less able to repair damage, but fasting can replace up to one third of all immune bodies with a single 72 hour fast. It can also strengthen the CD45 protein found on most immune cells, which is involved in differentiating between friend and foe within the body. This not only speeds up the removal of damage, but also helps keep autoimmune issues in check. Some people have told me they got nothing out of fasting for wrinkles or gray hair, but usually they either did essentially nothing, which is very common in people going to the gym, for example, or they did do some longer fasts, but they did very few of them. That's more like the guy at the gym that goes in and kicks butt for two or three weeks. Then he gives up and says it did nothing for him and quits. I am the Eradicator. Oh. When I stand atop the de-squash ladder, then and only then will I reveal my true identity. James Thorson, I shall defeat you. We almost won the second game. I think my mighty screen was a bit off. I think it was your serve. When I started fasting, I had a large neuroma on one wrist and a weird rough patch on my face that the doctor was concerned about. I was excited to see if they would go away and each week after my 72 to 96 hour fast, I would look but I'd see no changes. Eventually I figured they would just never go away and stopped looking. Then one day, a few months later, I realized both of them were just gone and I'd never even noticed them going. It had taken more than a couple of fasts, but eventually they did go. And that was also the case for my gray hair, which slowly improved over time while fasting, 
Unfortunately, as I fasted less, it has come back somewhat in the last year, and now I am stepping up my fasting and improving my diet to try and get rid of it. I think there's two things to keep in mind. First off, while you can repair through fasting, it takes a significant amount of time and effort. For example, Jodi Lorat did heal quite a few problems, but she did a very long 21 day fast. morning guys and welcome to day 20 of my 21 day fast so the next surgery was imminent I saw a surgeon we did all kinds of scans and he determined that the root in fact of the meniscus itself so there was a tear in the meniscus but the root was detached and there was no fiber connecting it so sometimes that can heal on its own but uh, if there's a fiber but I did not have one according to the scans that surgery success rate is only about 50%. So right before I did this surgery, I actually did my 11 day fast. It was about, I ended it a couple weeks before the actual surgery happened. And during that time, I remember my knee after a few days in becoming incredibly inflamed. And I believe that it was stem cells going to work uh, on the knee. So I went into my surgery and in the post-op room when I woke up, the surgeon said, what did you do? And of course, I was slightly groggy at the time coming out and I said, what are you talking about? He said, your knee root meniscus has reattached itself. I didn't need to do anything to it. I just had to clean up the little tear in the meniscus. And I said, well, I fasted for 11 days. Just keep in mind if you are doing shorter fasts, you will probably need more total time to get healing like that. So you might need half a dozen or even a dozen 72 hour fasts to get the same results of a 21 day fast. Some people think they will live to 140 through fasting. I doubt that's possible, but if you are going to live that much longer from fasting, you will probably have to do quite a lot of it. On the other hand, one single 72 hour fast can repair your immune system and prevent immunosenescence, that is, an ineffective immune system. When your immune system is senescent and barely functional, you cannot repair anything in the body properly, and this includes the signs of aging. In the right circumstances, this could also save your life, especially when it comes to infections and cancer. The other factor is diet, and when it comes to glycation, specifically carbs, the more I research into this stuff and the more science comes out, the more obvious it becomes that carbs age you, especially when it comes to your outward appearance. If you are constantly glycating your elastin and constantly suppressing the regeneration of your skin, then of course your skin will be thin and frail. This is what lets cellulite show on your skin, what causes wrinkles, and a large part of why your body is unable to repair the damage. You're simply doing too much damage to repair. When you eat a low carb diet, you also upregulate glutathione, which helps a great deal with countering the damage of aging. So on top of doing less damage, you are also cleaning it up more easily. Taurine and glycine also have very positive effects on skin quality and are typically found in low carb protein sources like seafood, meat, and especially bone broth when it comes to glycine. It's also important to realize that taurine is essential for proper protein folding for every protein in your body. The less you have in your diet, the more misfolded and malfunctioning proteins you'll have, and the more time your phagocytes will have to spend trying to clean up all these problems. This takes time away from fixing your skin from other issues, and you're going to look older. So if you want to make a change, then fasting can repair the damage if you put enough into it, but diet is also vital. Thank you. Sure. Oh, also, I need you to know that I don't say no to him. And he can't eat anything with carbon in it. Carbon? It's all from China. <laughs> 